Call all hands. Beat to quarters. Now, now, the gun. Stand by this tablet battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lint stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire! <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's Indomitable Man of the Sea, Horatio Hornblower. the one which depresses a man most is that of helplessness. And nothing gives that feeling more than defeat. When I was still in my twenties, a lieutenant on board His Majesty's ship, Renown, there was a particular night when we were standing off the island of Haiti. He tried to force our way past the Spanish fort which guarded the entrance to Samana Bay. And we'd run aground. We'd been forced to turn tail and run like a frightened hare. Miss Rome, blow, sir. Hmm? Yes? Yes? Captain's orders, sir. Will you report to the cabin at once? Report to the captain? Aye, aye, sir. At once. Captain's cabin? What have I done wrong? Lieutenant Hornblower reporting, sir. Uh, uh, come in, come in, Hornblower. And please be good enough to close the door. Lieutenant Bush and I are having a devil of a time keeping these charts from blowing away as it is. I'm sorry, sir. There is quite a draft. Uh, well, Hornblower, what's this you've been up to? Up to, sir? I've been asleep, sir. Well, what's that to do with it? I mean this foolish, impractical scheme of yours. Well, allow me to explain, sir. Uh, Mr. Hornblower, I, I took the liberty of telling Captain Buckland. Telling him what, Lieutenant Bush? Oh, you are sleepy. What we talked about on deck, Hornblower, your idea of a landing party, storming the fort from the rear. Oh, oh, yes, Captain Buckland, yes, sir. Uh, maybe yes, maybe no, Hornblower. It all depends. I, I think it's possible, sir. Possible depends on many things. For example, how many men we sent ashore? A hundred, sir. A hundred plus the Marines. Oh, that's a total of a uh, hundred and eighty. Spaniards might have a good deal more. Oh, sir, I think not. You must have noticed yesterday during the naval action they, they were firing only six guns from the fort. Oh, don't say only six, Hornblower. They were big guns, extremely big. Yes, but that's not what I mean, sir. I'm, I'm sure that none of us will ever forget how big they were. What I mean is gun crews can't be more than ten. Well, that's ten to each gun. That's sixty. And say the same number to look after ammunition detail and garrison. Oh, well, that can't be more than 120, sir. Yeah, 120. Behind solid stone walls. Well, they won't be guarding the rear of the fort, sir. And how do you judge that, pray tell me? They're expecting an attack from the water, sir, especially after our attempt of yesterday. Yes, I'd be obliged if you stopped mentioning that. Yes, sir. B but it's true. Here's the island of Haiti, sir. Here's the Spanish fort overlooking Samana Bay. Yes, Scotchman's Bay. Yes. Behind it to the left. Uh, that's your suggested landing place, eh? Yes, Lieutenant Bush. Oh, ah. Although it's not really my place to suggest. But... Well, go on with it, Hornblower. What about the natives? Well, they hold this half of the island, sir, the right half. We're not at war against them. No, sir. But the Dons are. 
We might as well take it into our considerations. They're afraid of the natives, sir. That's why they'll be watching the front of the fort. Right here, Scotsman's Bay. And then this way, through the marsh and up the ridge of land, and, and there's the fort. And with the fort in our hands, we'll control all of Samana Bay. The bay is a rat's nest of Spanish privateers. They, they could never use it as an anchorage again, sir. Oh, if, Hornblower. There's always if. Why, yes, sir? Uh, it's getting late, gentlemen. We'll, uh, we'll think about it. Think about it? Sir, now what? Well, sir, I mean, you'd, you'd put it off. Well, Hornblower, you're not suggesting this can be done now, tonight? Well, there's time enough, sir. There's time enough tomorrow night. Yes, sir, only... Only what? Good heavens, isn't my crew tired enough already? Yes, but the Dons are also tired, sir. And the longer we wait, the longer they have to consider the whole situation and prepare. Yes. What do you say, Lieutenant Bush? Well, sir, I'm inclined to agree with Lieutenant Hornblower. Soon it's done, biggest surprise, I say. Oh, very well, then. A landing party it is. Scotsman's Bay. Lieutenant Bush, you'll be in charge. A hundred men and our Marine Guard. Aye, sir. I suppose you'll need a second in command. I will. That many men. Good. Well, you can take whom you choose. Lieutenant Bush, uh, if you please. Yeah? Oh, well, nothing, sir. Only... <laughs> will you look at him now, Captain? Mm -hmm. He can hardly stand at attention. He's so anxious to go. Of course, Hornblower... Who else would I take as second in command? Wasn't this your scheme in the first place? Agreed, Bush, agreed. Hornblower's your second. Although I'll be left rather short-handed. It'll go badly with all of us if this venture fails. You'll have the renown standing off some other bad dawn, sir? I will. And I'll have my glass trained on the fort. Best arrange a signal. If we're successful, sir, we'll fly our flag above the Spaniards. Yeah, that's good enough. Our ensign above the dons. Good. Now, let's see. Uh, well, Hornblower, you're tapping your legs like a regular cricket. What now? What else is there? Well, I was wondering if we'd best alter our course, so We can head for Scotchman's Bay now. We, we shouldn't waste any time. The order was given and the ship heeled over. The black bulk of the tropic island grew larger before our straining eyes. The land breeze caught us, and, and then we heard the swell of the surf. And then we were in the small boats heading in towards the beach at Scotchman's Bay. Steady there, Helm. If you hit it in properly, we'll swamp the lot of us. I sir. Hit it in, she is. Steady always, there. Rest of the small boats behind us, Hornblower? Aye, sir. I wish there wasn't so much phosphorescence in the water. We get a trail of it behind every boat. I hope you're right about the Dons looking the other way. So do I. 180 men. Let's go over the plans, Hornblower. <coughs> Aye, sir. Every man has strict orders not to load his musket. We'll be climbing through a tangle of brush. If a gun goes off by accident, it'll rouse every Spaniard in the fort. Or at least their wall sentries will rouse them. And we'll rely on cold steel. They are At least until we're inside the walls. Aye, sir. Do you think single file, Hornblower? You mean from the beach, sir? <clears throat> yeah, I... Uh, there'll most likely be a pass, but it'll be narrow. Well, there's the wall of the fort to scale also. Yeah. Oh, good Lord, I... I forgot the grapples. Grapples to reach the top of the wall. <coughs> yes, I ordered them put by, sir. They're, they're in the boats. Oh, good. <coughs> What's wrong with your throat, Hornblower? You keep making odd noises. My mouth's dry, sir. I keep getting thirsty. Mm -hmm. Nervous, eh? Oh, so am I. Shall I proceed as planned, sir? Yes. You'll go ahead with the ordinary hands, Hornblower. Yes, proceed until you come within sight of the Spanish fort. You'll wait there until I arrive with the Marines. All clear? Yes, sir. Quite clear. Lieutenant Bush. Yes, what is it? We're at the beach, sir. Oh, lad. We're driving in. All right, oars. On the next wave. Now. Our 
after we left the marsh and began going upward, along a narrow path we found on a ridge, the climb was back-breaking. And nor was that all. Wilson, pass the order to halt. Aye, sir. Halt there. Pass the order. What is it, sir? Are your eyes accustomed to the darkness, Walton? I think so, sir. Well, there's something up ahead in that clearing. Can't be the fort. We're not far enough for that. Why, I can't make it out, sir. No, nor can I. Whatever it is, it's, it's moving, sir. It might be men. Sentries, sir? Well, it's possible. Can't move the column till we make certain. Walton, unfasten your bayonet. I have my saber. We'll go forward and find out what it is. Alone, sir? Yes. to recall my thoughts on that sultry night on the island of Haiti when we were attempting a surprise action against the Spanish fort. 180 men, a good portion of the crew of His Majesty's ship Renown, all on shore in the darkness. The Spanish fort only a few hundred yards away, yet all might be lost. For in the darkness ahead I'd spied something moving. I felt a tremendous weight on my conscience, for it was I who had suggested this whole attack. As I went ahead to investigate with only the seaman Woolton to keep me company, my heart was pounding sixty to the dozen. Sir! Yes, Woolton, directly ahead of us. Must be a sentry. If he blunders on, sir, sir. Daddy Woolton, no panic, if you please. Aye, sir. Coming this way, sir. Aye. Cold steel, remember. There must be no sound. Cold steel. Chills it did. I could have sworn it. Yes, yes, yes. So could I. Now, Wilton, listen. I'll wait here. You go back to the column and have the men come forward and pass the word that there are cows about. If you and I almost took this one for the enemy, there's no telling what nervous troops will try to fire at. Even a four legged beast can raise an alarm, you know. <laughs> progress continued. Bush's column came along and we moved forward. And every sound seemed magnified by excitement and nervousness. And every whisper seemed a shout. Silence there! Silence! Quiet there! Are we never going to reach that blasted fort, Hornblower? I think we have, Mr. Busher. What? We have reached it, sir. Directly there before us. By heaven, so it is. Hold there, hold the Spanish fort. Hornblower, come forward with me. I sir. There's not a light showing. Nothing, no, sir. The moon's beginning to rise. A bit lighter than it was five minutes ago. Yes, it is. Close enough. The walls look uncommon high from here. Yes, they're not too high for grapple, sir. And there's nobody like sailors for swarming up and over. Isn't that... Isn't that a sally port yonder? A sally port? Where? Directly ahead, sir. A bit to the right. All right. The door must be wooden, sir. A good, strong axeman might be able to cut through it. You're referring to Burson's mate Silk, perhaps? Aye, sir. Best man with an axe I've ever seen. Mm. Suppose he fails, Hornblower. Can't risk all our eggs in one basket. We won't have to, sir. I suggest we split our forces. If you take the sailors and deploy them to the left with grapples and cutlasses, I can take the marines and try for the sally port. Take Silk with you? Yes, sir. Well... Moon's rising. It'll be dawn soon. Come along, home, lad. Now, Marines, you understand your instructions. Right. Lieutenant Bush has taken the rest over to the left wall. His men are deployed with grapples and cutlasses. Silk. Aye, sir. Right here, sir. You've marked out your target, Silk? Ah, uh, 
I got it fixed and proper, sir. Good. And this here axe is as sharp as a man could wish. Okay. Uh, don't you fret, sir. I'll bash that Sally Port door in like it was cheese. And me hungry rat. <laughs> I'm counting on it, Silk. Bolton. Yes, sir. Let me remind you, cold steel, no shooting until we're well inside. Yes, sir. Well enough. Order fixed bayonets. Reams. Fixed bayonet. Silk, stay beside me. Aye, sir. Very well. I believe we can now move forward. Here we are. Silk. Silk. Right here, sir. Stand aside. She must be grappling with the walls by now, sir. Yes, Walton. The Spaniards are coming to life. Keep at it, Silk. Aye, sir. Several more should do it. I see just one more, sir. If someone could reach through and lift off the bolt, sir. Stand aside, Silk. I've got it. If it is, sir, it's not mine. You unharmed? I believe so, sir. Though there are three dead among our Marines and a dozen casualties. I've established a station for the wounded over near the Sally Port. Oh, have you now? Good idea. We can concentrate all the wounded there. Uh, Don's fought quite well, didn't they? Yes, sir. Um, sir, I, I beg pardon. Eh? Hadn't we better make the fort secure? It's secure. We've won. We should post a guard on the powder house, sir. With your permission, sir. Uh, Hornblower, there's another matter one's tending to. There is, sir. Aye. Isn't there a well inside the walls? A well? Well, you're right, sir. There is. I hope it hasn't been poisoned. I'll, I'll never forgive myself. See to that also, Wilson. Aye, aye, sir. This way, Hornblower. It's turned on. High time to make signal to the renown. Yes, sir. Silk? Yes, sir. I see you have our colors. Smartly now. Bring down the Spanish flag. Aye, aye, sir. Once this business is over, I'll be grateful for sleep. So will I. And water also. Yes, water also. Oh. What's the matter, Hornblow? Well, nothing, sir. Just that I'm ashamed of myself. For what? Forgetting to post a guard over the water well. Oh, that's the only thing you did forget. Yes, I should have remembered. Should have. Hornblower, I'm the one who should be ashamed. All right, don't look at me so. What have I done? You led the attack, Lieutenant Bush. Old Blower, it was your plan. You conceived it. I had no notion of what to do. I, and between us, neither did Captain Buckland. Your plan and your details. It was you remembered the grapples. It was you devised how we should divide up. It was you who had the sense enough to put guards on the prisoners and remember the powder house and the spirits. If you really think that? Would I say it otherwise? Well, I... I didn't want to make a speech, but... <clears throat> oh, yes, Silk? Ready to bend on our colors? Yes, sir. One moment. Give me our ensign, please. Here it is, sir. Hornblower? Yes, sir? Here. What, sir? Here. Take it. Take it, ma'am. The British flag, if you please. I want you to bend it on and hoist it up. After all, if it weren't for you, it might not go up at all. I... I... Yes, sir. <laughs> Looks good in the sunlight, don't she, sir? That she does, Silk. By heaven, that she does indeed.
Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.